This is a response to P.P. Simmons' video, Creation Evolution, Let's Be Honest. Well, P.P., we really must stop meeting like this, and if you stopped spreading your repulsive lies and deliberate misinformation like manure over the internet, perhaps we wouldn't have to. This time you've elaborated on a subject that you've touched upon previously, and that's your idea that scientists and creationists both look at the same physical evidence provided by nature and draw their conclusions based upon their philosophical inclinations. Needless to say, there were a number of points I took issue with, and I'd like to take this opportunity to address them. So let's get started and see whether you can live up to the title of your video and display even the faintest modicum of honesty, or whether we're in for just another endless stream of fabrications, misrepresentations, and falsehoods. Both the evolutionist and the creationist are observing the same evidence, and they are commenting on it profusely. It is an undeniable fact that both are producing books, journalistic contributions, films, scientific study reports. Whoa, hold it right there, shall we, PP? Is there any chance of you providing us with just one scientific study report produced by a creationist on creationism? And if you should by some chance consider supplying a piece of propaganda from one of the digital shit pits you're so fond of frequenting, then please think again. Just because a document contains lots of long words and acronyms, PP, doesn't mean that it's scientific, no matter how many times or how fervently you claim otherwise. Scientific papers are published in scientific journals that are accepted by the scientific community of researchers who work in the science departments of accredited universities around the world and are subjected to the rigorous quality control mechanism known as peer review. They contain succinct but accurate reviews of the field, novel experimental results to support the ideas being presented, and most importantly, extensive citations of all the relevant literature, regardless of whether it supports or counters the author's thesis. Citations that oppose their contentions must be explained either in the light of subsequent evidence or the data being presented, but are never ignored. All of this is aimed at understanding the true nature of reality by ensuring the elimination of personal bias and opinion and the acceptance of conclusions that are backed by empirical physical evidence. The outstanding and unequivocal success of this approach should be evident to anyone who takes a moment to look at the world around them. Creationist misinformation tracts, on the other hand, are never exposed to even the faintest whiff of a peer review process and appear in nothing even vaguely resembling a scientific journal. They contain no original data, and if they do contain citations, it's usually only one or two articles whose conclusions can be twisted to make them seem incompatible with whichever scientific theory is being besmirched at the time. Anything that disagrees with the point they're trying to make is simply ignored. All of this is aimed at defending pre-existing beliefs and assumptions regardless of the mountains of evidence that speak against them and your slimy little attempt to coat your colleagues' repugnant lies with a veneer of credibility by calling them scientific just doesn't wash, PP. You can tell because of the smell that accompanies it. As for looking at the same evidence as real scientists, I think I adequately explained in Holy Hallucinations 15 how you yourself consistently prove this to be an out-and-out -out lie without any help from me. Lying for Jesus may make you feel good, PP, but any god worth its salt would be shuddering at the dishonorable depths to which you're willing to sink in its defense. Both have their scientists lined up to give either evolutionary or creationist commentary on the discovered evidence. It's interesting how you chose your words to make it sound as if there was some kind of evenly pitched battle going on, isn't it, PP? You didn't even see fit to mention that your scientists are outnumbered by anywhere from 20 to 1,000 to 1, did you? Doesn't sound quite so impressive when that's pointed out, does it? You also failed to mention that the majority of your scientists are in fact nothing of the kind but rather a bunch of shady spivs with dubious if non-existent credentials, while only a few of the remainder have advanced degrees in fields that are relevant to the matters in question. Implying that your ragtag group of misfits and charlatans are some kind of match for the vast majority of professional scientists is comparable to your betting your shorts on Pee Wee Herman in a fight against Mike Tyson. To be completely honest then, each side argues about who is interpreting it more scientifically. Both sides will claim that the other is ignoring some piece of scientific given. It is the same for both sides. Show me a mistake that a creation scientist has made, and I will show you a plethora of mistakes that have been made and even printed in textbooks by the evolutionists for all to see. Start accusing a creationist of sloppy science, and I will show you where even some of the very foundational elements of evolution theory have completely ignored pure scientific method and falsification processes. It'd certainly be a pleasant surprise to everyone to see that you were being completely honest, PP. But as we all know, the likelihood of it actually happening are about as high as Michael Moore becoming the next chairman of the RNC. 
So let me reiterate that despite your continued assertions to the contrary, there is no such thing as a creation scientist. No creationist has ever conducted an experiment that supported their assertions, let alone published it in the scientific literature. All your freakish collection of nutjobs has ever done is inflict upon us a seemingly unending torrent of unsupported speculation, fallacious logic, and biased reasoning. The creationist mistakes you refer to are nothing of the kind but rather blatant misinformation, deliberate omission, and simply repugnant and reptilian lies. On the other hand, the vast majority of scientific mistakes that you alluded to are changes and adjustments made in the light of new evidence. Your simplistic and childlike view of the world where there's only one truth and absolutely no shades of grey appears to render you incapable of appreciating that the ability to change and improve is the true strength of science and not the weakness that you perceive it to be. So if you could provide me with any specific examples, I'd be more than happy to explain to you exactly why you're talking out of your ass. Also, don't you find it telling in any way, PP, that these mistakes aren't pointed out by creationists who never generate any data of their own, but by other scientists, and that the same can be said for the very small number of cases of actual academic fraud that have arisen? And don't you think that it's also a little strange that creationists rarely admit to any mistakes themselves and continue to brazenly propagate them after they've been pointed out? Apparently you don't, and perhaps that's because that would involve using your brain to think rather than to excrete your putrid and noxious lies. Comparing the mistakes of creationists to those of the scientific community is like claiming that O.J. Simpson is as innocent as Maggie Simpson and you should be either begging your baby Jesus for forgiveness for your repugnant dishonesty or for a cure for your brain disease. And by the way, don't think that I didn't notice the shot of a book that you presumably consider to be by one of your scientists. Harun Yaha, also known as Adnan Oktar, is a religious nutjob of the Islamic variety with absolutely no scientific training and a track record of dishonesty and deceit equally extensive and as brown as yours. Is this really the best you can do to showcase the level of intellectual talent you've mustered to your cause, PP? And finally, you were evidently unaware of the irony in the example of evolutionary mistakes you just showed us. I'll elaborate after a couple more examples. Additionally, show me an elemental scientific theory of a creationist that was later proven to be wrong, and again, I can point you to time after time when the same has been true with the evolutionist. Several of these evolutionist blunders have been well publicized, documented, and celebrated. Do you even realize that the article entitled Evolution's Greatest Mistakes that you just showcased here and in the previous clip is actually about the imperfections in biological structures that pervade the natural world that are beautifully explained by evolutionary theory and are incompatible with the concept of an omnipotent and perfect designer? Do you also realize that three of the four hits displayed on your Google search are pro-evolutionary while the fourth expands on a number of old and threadbare creationist argument about Piltdown, Nebraska, Java and Orchi men? All these are either examples of poor journalism, not science, or of the self-correcting scientific mechanisms that I alluded to earlier, and also of the dishonesty of creationists who refuse to stop spreading their poison even after they've been corrected numerous times. So the question I have, PP, is whether you're still willing to claim that you are looking at the same evidence as scientists are because I've just proved to you with concrete evidence that you're either illiterate or simply uninterested in reading anything that may run counter to the fairy tales that you've convinced yourself are true. In short, then, since we are looking at the same evidence, how is it that we can arrive at such different conclusions? The so-called evidence is what it is, and it says simply that it exists for our observation and interpretation. What the evidence means is then declared by the scientist, either an evolution scientist or a creation scientist. The evolutionist begins his examination of the evidence declaring that there is no intelligent designer. The creationist, on the other hand, looks at the very same evidence, employs the principles of scientific method and understanding from the beginning, that the amount of evidence that we find that implies a designer is overwhelming. With regard to the first part of the clip, PP, I think I've already clearly demonstrated that we're certainly not looking at the same evidence because the creationist has absolutely no interest in searching for the truth and instead is preoccupied with doing anything it takes to prop up his crumbling and ludicrous preconceptions. So now let's address your second assertion. Science is the enterprise of gathering knowledge of the physical world and the process by which this is achieved. As a result, science has nothing to say regarding the existence or non-existence of a god or gods because these entities, by their very definition, are beyond its scope. All it does is place limits on the claims that ignorant fucktards can make about how such an entity could have created the physical universe. 
In fact, if a god does actually exist, science has done nothing other than open humanity's eyes to the sheer magnitude and magnificence of its creation, while people like you who insist on clinging to the primitive tales that their parents convinced them were true do nothing but constrain their god in a small and insignificant box constructed thousands of years ago by primitive people in a primitive age. If I were God, PP, I certainly wouldn't be grateful for the way you seem to be bent on minimizing me. Of course, I don't expect you to understand any of this because you seem to be insistent on projecting your inability to conceive of alternatives that don't incorporate your preconceptions and assumptions onto anyone who doesn't share them. The next clip demonstrates that you're more than aware that science makes no claims with regards to the existence of deities, and also your inability to refute this without revealing either more of your seemingly limitless ignorance or your willingness to spew falsehoods like a dropped can of cheap beer. Since we are being honest, it has always amazed me when an evolutionist says something like, in the scientific study of evolution, we make no statement about religion or God. We merely examine the evidence. But this simply is not honest. Their own scientific literature bears this out. Their very examination of the evidence in the first place presupposes that no intelligent design was involved. Do you really think that the Dawkins quotes you showed us are part of the scientific literature, PP? If so, then this at least explains your delusion about the scientific reports being produced by creationists and again highlights your complete ignorance of the science and the scientific method you so eagerly slander with your shameless chicanery. The Blind Watchmaker is a popular science book that explains the principle of natural selection to laypersons and only a retard of epic proportions would consider it even remotely comparable to a peer-reviewed publication. Similarly, the Edinburgh Science Festival is an event that promotes science to the general public and is hardly a bona fide scientific conference. Dawkins may be an atheist, and while his rational mindset may have predisposed him to both atheism and a career in science, his philosophical beliefs have nothing to do with his work as a scientist. The quotes you provided are of his exposition of the latter in non-technical fora and your duplicitous use of his personal opinion to smear science with your vile and filthy innuendos demonstrates exactly how effective your religion is at making you a better person. I could equally use the same tactic to claim that because Ted Haggard has a predilection for anal rumpy pumpy and suspicious white powder, Christianity must be a religion that condones the indiscriminate use of Vaseline and angel dust. Of course, I would never dream of engaging in such slander because unlike you, I know the difference between right and wrong and don't need to concoct a fictitious policeman in the sky in order to pretend that I do. So could you either supply us with an actual example of a peer-reviewed scientific publication that comments on the supernatural or kindly retract the statement? Of course, I know that you'll never find the former and I'll crap my pants in amazement should you do the latter. We also acknowledge that there are many wonders involving changes within species that obviously are coded within the elemental makeup of the species and then from the beginning have followed a natural process of change initiated by the designer of the design. Same evidence, different conclusion. Nice try, PP, but what you neglected to notice was that your conclusion isn't based on the evidence at all, but on what all your arguments invariably boil down to, ignorance and personal incredulity. Your standard formula is to take some scientific observation, bollocks on for about five minutes about how complicated it is, and then claim that it must be due to divine design. You don't need any actual evidence to come to that conclusion, PP, just a complete and utter lack of any intellectual curiosity or honesty. If you think that I'm exaggerating, then let's take a look at another example. Intelligence and design scream from one end of the earth to the other. It seems unthinkable to say that all of this obvious intelligence had no intelligent input or intervention from the beginning. It may seem unthinkable to you, PP, but I suppose that shouldn't surprise me. Your inability or unwillingness to understand the science that explains this complexity is not de facto evidence that a god, and in particular your god, did it any more than your inability to stop talking shit means that a supreme being is using your mind as his personal toilet. In the same way, our inability to understand any given natural phenomena is not an excuse to substitute any explanation that we find convenient because a lack of an explanation is not positive evidence for the supernatural but a reflection of our incomplete knowledge. And if you can't live with that kind of intellectual honesty or uncertainty, PP, I suggest that you try growing up a little. Of course, I realize this is falling on deaf ears because you have a track record of flagrantly ignoring all the arguments and evidence that explain the phenomena that you choose to highlight. And that's because you're not interested in learning about the truth when it conflicts with your pre-imposed beliefs. 
All you're interested in doing is slinging your shit like a monkey in a cage and hoping that some of it will stick. And as long as you keep doing that, PP, then rest assured that I'll be here with my broom to clear up your mess and show you up for what you really are.